If you want to turn your pickup truck into an overland rig and a camping headquarters, this is one of the best ways of doing it. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the ins and outs and all the features on this. The brand new four-wheel campers Hawk model. Let's start by first looking at the truck. This truck is our brand new 2020 Ford F-250. It's got a standard bed, which means the bed length on this truck is about 6.75 feet. And the six and a half foot floor Hawk camper fits perfectly into it with no tailgate attached. But of course this truck is part of our Overland series, no pavement needed. So it has a suspension lift and bigger tires. These are 37s. First, they have this pretty wonderful folding step. This is a top of the line Hawk model, which will retail for just over $30,000. It comes with a deadbolt, which is an additional security feature. You can have a screen door with a little pass-through window. And of course, if it's windy, you can latch this into place. This is a pop-up camper, which means the top goes up to offer extra space on the inside. So I'm just over 6'2", and because this truck is pretty tall, even I have to kind of use the truck step. And one of the other features I love about this camper, first of all, smooth side. It's kind of this black and silver look, but also lights. It's got running lights all over it, so you can see this thing coming from a long ways away. And on this heavy-duty truck, it looks like a proper semi-truck. Do these two. All right, let's see exactly how much time it takes me to actually raise the roof on this camper. Let's go. First, you have to undo this latch. Then all you do is just kind of put a little bit of shoulder power into it, or just use your hands. And it's very easy because you have struts that assist you. Here's how you operate the front of the pop-up ceiling. Just use this little piece of wood, push it forward, secure it at the ceiling. Here at the back, this is basically how you lock the top in place. Push all the way in and use this little strap and go around. You might be wondering why is this here? Why are there are no extra windows? on the back or the front and that's because of the strength of the top if you're in a high wind situation this rear wall and the front wall make a rigid structure so it doesn't blow over in the wind that's it uh let's see the time i was doing it kind of slowly and that's still one minute 19 seconds Let's go inside and I'll show you all the features. This is fully equipped, fully loaded. Okay, so first things first, there's not a lot of light in here, right? So you have these LED strips on the ceiling and you control the brightness of them by pushing this little power button. And then you have this triple wall. I love this. And this is extra insulation. You don't get any moisture built up on this. Of course, you can open the windows for extra light. And there's a see-through clear and now you're just left with a screen door basically or a screen window there are four of these in this camper if you don't have enough airflow you also have this basically a power fan that's equipped here on the rear section of the camper there's no way you see on this unit Here I am sitting at the dinette area. This table can swivel. It can actually lower or raise a little bit. And this is a comfortable height for me. This could be my mobile office. This dinette can also convert into a bed space. So there's just a couple knobs here. You can actually undo this one, remove the tabletop. Very lightweight, very simple. Then you undo the bottom. And like I told you, you can adjust the height of this table using this as well and then you simply use the tabletop to make the rest of the bed surface here look at the attention to detail here on the bottom and dinette you can fold this out you can put this hard-sided cushion at an angle 
so it's more comfortable to sit in. Like I said, I'm not a small guy, just about, just over 6'2". Oh, oh, this is nice. Okay, a bit of a Western theme going on on these coverings. The cab over part is a bed and it's extendable. Very nice drawer system, it feels high quality. So if you put all these cushions that are included, this is almost a king, so that means you can sleep either this direction, north-south, or east-west. Over the front bed, there's another window and also a place to vent. Now on this side is your kitchen. So here you have your sink. And this top of the line model um, has a 20 gallon fresh water tank on board and um, hot and cold water. And of course here is a two burner stove still propane fired there's propane on board um, and you need to use a lighter to light this up so usually like a barbecue style grill style lighter speaking of cooking and also safety there's a smoke detector here at the top and there's a carbon monoxide sensor at the bottom underneath the stove another place to uh, hold your utensils for the kitchen then down here is in the utility drawer um, this is the shower head that I'll show you in a bit. Of course, this is your shore power plug. So you can connect on the outside. And several other things, extra turnbuckles. This is the water heater switch. You push and hold it for a few seconds. And you can actually hear the propane come on. So the water heater is now working. Of course, you can turn it off. The heater in general is very, very easy. You can just control it like you would in your regular home. This is the outlet for the heater. It's on the driver's side. You can twist this to direct the air either you know, towards the floor, towards the front, towards the top. And I already uh, spent a night in this camper in Salt Lake City. And I can tell you it works really well. Then underneath the sink, there's also easy access to your water pump and some other piping and plumbing. Uh, and this is more done for maintenance and also serviceability. Underneath the thermostat, you have your power options here, USB cables, regular 12 volt, and of course 110 volt only when you're plugged into shore. Down here, there's a water pump switch as well, and you can actually test uh, how much water you have or battery power. And of course the solar is working, and here's how you can monitor the solar system as well. It's Overland Solar, 14 volts right now. So you can monitor it and go up and down, make sure everything is proper. Down here is a fuse panel. Everything is labeled, really well done. On the driver's side, here's where the house batteries hide. There's two of them. If you are plugged into shore power, there's also an outlet in here, but you can only use the 110 outlets if you're connected to shore power from the outside. You cannot use it just off the grid, but you still have 12 volt. You can plug in an inverter and of course use the solar capability. Of course, as with any RV, your fire extinguisher is here on the passenger side. Under the fridge, there is an extra cubby hole. Once again, lots of storage options. And here's the fridge. It's got a latch. It's fairly large for a camper this size. I like that a lot. Here's the freezer. There's a little ice cube tray, a couple of additional shelves, and you can control the uh, temperature here with this knob. Of course, the four corners of this camper have these aluminum brackets. This is where you can attach the legs so you can lift the camper off of the truck. We have removed it for our trip. We're gonna keep the camper on the truck for many, many months, an extended period of time. With this truck, you can kind of feel it rocking once in a while. So if you're worried about that, you can leave the legs in place. And actually when you parked for an extended period of time, you just lower the legs to the ground and prevent the rocking of the truck. I've been mentioning solar all the time. I love solar. Just basically free energy after you get it set up. If you have an additional panel, um, you can uh, plug it in here on the driver's side. Let's say you're parked in the shade 
and you have a cable, additional solar panel, you can put it outside somewhere and get extra power. All right, finally, shower time. Okay, I'm not gonna be taking a shower, especially since I don't have an enclosure. I'm not gonna you know, put you through that. But here outside on the driver's side, you have a place to plug into the water source. And then you can basically move this from cold to hot. Oh yeah, hot and cold exterior shower. Here on the driver's side, this is where the heater exhales. Don't touch this as if you've been running it. It's very hot. Down here is a place you could drain the gray water from the sink. I just used it a tiny bit, so there's a little bit of gray water in here. Up above is this lockable compartment where you can fill water. The camper comes with a special hose um, so you don't get any contaminants when you're getting city water. You can fill your tank here or you can just plug in to city water and bypass the tank. There's also a panel for the water heater on the driver's side. As you can see, high quality components, little peak window, you can peek at the actual pilot light. All right, over here, 110 or 125 volt, 30 amp power supply. This is shore power. You can, if you have access to it, obviously you can use it to charge your batteries or run your sockets uh, on the inside. This right here is another reminder that you can customize your off-road truck camper. This is a shovel and X kit from Illuminus and it mounts exactly where the leg of the camper would mount. Very solid, lockable. We'll be using this a lot during our cross-country trip, either for chopping different branches of trees. Um, and of course, a shovel is nice to have if somebody gets stuck, which I think will be Tommy in the Jeep Gladiator, but I digress. Also, there are these footsteps and handholds. You, when the roof is down, you can climb up and there is a rail system on the roof of this camper. So if you wanted to mount a kayak or something up there, you can do that and actually use these to climb up and get it. On the passenger side, here in the back, here's where your propane hides. These are smaller bottles, but there's two of them. You have to change it manually. Once you run out of one, you can go to the, your backup. Here's a little cubby. The guys from Four Wheel Campers told me not to use this for anything. This is basically uh, the back of the fridge and it needs some air to circulate and cool it off. Once again, attention to detail. You see this rubber seal? It goes over the front portion of this camper. When you're traveling down the road, they basically don't want rainwater to come in here, which is very nice. And of course, electrically, the camper is also tied into the truck. This is part of the wiring system. It's a three wire system. It's dedicated. It's not using the trailer wiring that's already on the truck. So that's a very nice system. You can get different floor plans from four-wheel campers. The Hawk camper model starts as a shell. You can order it as a shell, literally. It will be the same construction, aluminum tubing, without a dinette, without any appliances, basically a shell. That starts around $13,000. Then, if you want a base hawk, so you do want the cabinetry, you do want a simple interior, you do want cushions and the bed, then the pricing starts at around $19,900. And then this unit right here can go for upwards of $32,000. Under here, there's plenty of storage options. There's a pretty big compartment. And under here, there's a little, little panel. And this is where you can reach inside towards the bed of the truck and actually undo the tie down system. You're probably wondering, how's this tied down to the truck? Well, there are four hooks drilled into the bed and you're using basically turnbuckles. Aha, more space. You can use this for some of your kitchen utensils, etc. maybe in top paper towels. Under here, there's more storage, but also a lot more wiring once again an access panel to get to the tie-down system. And finally, in the floor, which seems to be just a step, is actually another storage compartment. On top here on the passenger side, there's a vanity, there's a nice mirror here, and a deep compartment. You can store all your toiletries, your towels, whatever, in there. An extra cupboard down here. And a secondary one in here. 
So lots of options. This is like your dresser area. There's also a floor light. Makes it feel kind of premium in here at night. Once again, on the passenger side, there's another huge compartment here by the floor. Some people use this for a, a mobile cassette toilet system. So why would you get a pop-up camper like this instead of a solid shell? Well, I think one important reason, if you're serious about off-roading, then it's nice to have a lower profile so the trees and the bushes don't scratch your camper. You can go more places technically, and also you can be get a little bit better aerodynamics when you're traveling on the road from place to place. Have a lower roof, lower clearance, and you still have a lot of insulation, not a lot of noise protection. If there was something loud next to you, you would hear it, but still a fully equipped camper. But there you go, a thorough inside and out look at this brand new Hawk camper. And I hope you agree with me that for the budget between $20,000 and about $32,000, you can get something outfitted this way and turn your pickup truck into a proper Overland rig with lots and lots of comfort. And guys, go back to tfloffroad.com for all kinds of off-road reviews and also off-road campers. Hey TFL team, this is Eric Goins coming to you from Knoxville, Tennessee. Wanted to do a review on my 2019 F250 uh, Super Crew XLT with the 6.7 liter power stroke and six speed engine. Uh, this particular vehicle has the FX4 package, so I got the locking rear differential as well. Uh, I've had this vehicle for a little over a month. I'm the second owner of the vehicle. Uh, first owner had traded it in for a Ford Raptor. So the MSRP was 60,500. And then through some negotiation, I was able to get it for 43,500. So feel really good about the type of deal I got, especially for what I got with the vehicle. We've got uh, our bed liner that it came with, the fifth wheel gooseneck package. Uh, another upgrade that we did was the WeatherTech package, uh, WeatherTech floor mats. So as you can see, uh, we get very good use out of those. So here's the six, seven power stroke. Uh, the other modification that we have is the AFE power intake or air intake. Uh, I believe it added about 12 horsepower and 25 foot-pounds of torque. To be honest with you, didn't notice it. So with this uh, XLT package, we did not get the bigger screen. It's one of the things that I would have liked to have had. Uh, we do have the actual um, engine exhaust, which is something I wasn't previously familiar with with diesels. Uh, so I've learned a lot about from the TFL guys. Really love that when we're towing heavy. So for the life of the vehicle, it's averaged about 16.3 miles per gallon per the trip. And uh, since I've owned it, uh, what I have found is uh, when I'm driving on the interstate, I'm getting about 17-ish miles per gallon. So that's driving about 70, 75 miles an hour. And then when I'm just doing local city driving, I'm getting about 13.5 miles per gallon. And then when I'm towing, I'm able to get about 14, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 13 to 14 miles per gallon. So I did want to just comment on the miles per gallon that I'm getting. Go with me.